You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Once Upon a Time After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424 424- 256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Once Upon a Time After Show. Hello, Oncers. Bing is for doing, and we are doing another after show for Once Upon a Time Season 2, Episode 19, titled Lacey. We are so far into this season and it has just been getting better and better. I'm your host Kathy Kelly. Joining me today is Tiana Hobson. Hello everyone. Marissa Serafini. What's up guys? And Kaori Take. Good evening. And then we have a very special guest in studio. Probably the coolest 12 year old I think I've ever met and the coolest to grace our studio. Benjamin Stockham who is also a guest on Once Upon a Time. Woo! <laughs> you oh, are Benjamin. freaking adorable. Horrible, by Thank the way. You. Thank you. You, we were cracking up probably the entire episode with your commentary. <laughs> Thanks. So. They need to release the DVD with special commentary. Yeah. <laughs> that would be everywhere. So if people are unaware, you played Owen on uh, several episodes this season, which is the young Gregory Mandel, and so you shot that in Canada, right? In Canada, yes. That's crazy. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your first time in Canada? First time in Canada. What did you think? I've never been. Cold and, and rainy. It is cold it is there. Cold, rainy, yeah. Yeah. But you enjoyed your time on set, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Awesome. Well, we want to talk about more about your experience filming Once Upon a Time. Um, at the end of the show, we're going to do a special segment completely devoted to you. Woo! And we also want your commentary throughout this entire show. Let's do it. So let's, <laughs> let's get right it. into the episode. <laughs> Can you be a permanent guest? <laughs> I would love to. Come back come on. Come on. <laughs> um, so let's dive right into tonight's episode. First off, talking about Rumpelstiltskin and Belle's background. That was a huge part of tonight's episode. We started off with a great interaction. Rumpel just being a huge jerk to Belle. Yep. Um, which, I mean, we've always thought that that was her true love. Like, they were each other's true love. And I just kind of assumed that once she got there, he would be immediately nice to her. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you were wrong. Get wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I love it. <laughs> he was a jerk. And this is, um, we've seen a little bit of their background before. Um, her promising to trade her life, I guess. She mm-hmm. would be a servant mm-hmm. for him uh, saving their family, or her family from the ogres. Ogre wars. Well, darn ogres. Yeah. I, I definitely thought that he would be a jerk to her initially because there was a reason why she had to pull good out of him, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I wasn't that surprised but that you he know, was such an a-hole. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> the, the way that Rumpel was yelling, because he was yelling a lot in this mm-hmm. episode, especially in the old time, uh, it really reminded me of what the Beast was like. The yeah. Beast mm-hmm. used to yell all the time until he finally got soft and kind-hearted, but at first, he was a yeller. Yeah, that yeah. short temper, yeah. that short fuse. Exactly. He does have a short fuse. Mm-hmm. So it just reminded me of that. Mm-hmm. And there was a huge theme throughout tonight's episode that was, you know, I always knew there was good in you, or, you know, I, I never knew that you had that in you. And we saw that a lot with Belle in Old Enchanted Forest, and we saw that a lot of her in Storybrooke, which we're going to talk about in a minute. It was... I don't know. I like the theme, how it all carried over. I liked it, too. I thought it was a great way to kind of connect the two, because in one sense, you see Belle trying to pull the good out of him, and then the other, you see her pulling the bad out of him. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that either. Like, feuding, like, themes there of, you know, good and evil. So Mm. after their (laughs) initial interaction of him being a jerk and locking her up in a, a cell... 
Um, he gives her a pillow to muffle the noise, which I loved. <laughs> Such an evil character. That's and a nice twist. <laughs> something comes crashing down. He goes outside to find Robin Hood. Oh my gosh. Stealing a wand. Oh my gosh. Are you a fan of Robin Hood? Ah, uh, this I, I just got into Once Upon a Time, so this is like the first time I, I've like ever seen him. Well, this I think this is the first time that they've introduced him. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Are you familiar with the Robin Hood story? Uh, nope. Uh, but Robin Hood seems like a cool guy. <laughs> he just like totally saved his predator's wife. It was nice. He yeah. is a cool yeah. guy, actually. Yeah. Uh, he was one of my crushes when I was a kid. So the you know? cartoon? Yeah, the fox. The fox. The fox. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, the fox. Kevin Costner version. Yes, I had a crush on him, but it's the fox, I, not I was, so much. You know, I was kind of thinking of Robin Hood and Men in Tights. Oh, oh. that was. Had a rush that was a good one too. Yeah, too. There you go. I feel like we're all dating ourselves right now <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Benjamin's over there and he's never seen Robin Hood before. Benjamin. If you get a chance, there's these things called VHSs. <laughs> I know what it is. I, I know what those are. They're like the the those rectangle things. Oh, oh, man. Man. I'm sorry. We're all oh. so old. Oh my dear. Oh, oh, man. Man. oh that was great. I know. Benjamin, start, start with the Disney Robin Yeah, Hood. start with yes. the cartoon version with okay. the foxes. Best one to start. That's a fun one to start with and yes. move, work your way up. It's an animated series. Yeah. Or <laughs> movie. Okay, okay. Yes. Like it. Not like real foxes. Well, that'd be kind of awesome, yeah. but then I wouldn't have a crush on yeah. them. <laughs> um, it's kind of weird that you have a crush on me. Yeah. <laughs> His voice was kind of crush-worthy. Uh, so thank you. The voice was crush-worthy. <laughs> okay. Sure about I'll give box. that to you. Uh, so Robin Hood is stealing one of Rumpelstiltskin's wands and Rumpel says you can't or uh he's like you don't know the power of these wands and I feel like we really don't know the power of them yeah. yet I was yeah. thinking Harry Potter at that time yeah kind of was too and I was thinking how does well I guess we know how Rumpel Stiltskin would know about the wands but we never see him use a wand like he doesn't mm -hmm. have a use for a wand so it's kind of like well how do you know well because all the Rumpel is ma like he has yeah, he magic has so I guess wands are a way for people who aren't magical to do magic. Well, well, like, he turned Henry to porcelain and smashed him. That's but that was in nice. his dream. Oh, Thank goodness. Well, that yeah, well, but yeah. that does show that the wand can have any kind of powers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I just realized that in that dream sequence, Henry picked out the same wand mm -hmm. that yep. he stole. I'm slow yeah. on that it's, one. It's like, it's like a premonition dream or something. Yeah. 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 Except maybe, like, I don't know. I'm not good with, like, theories or anything. Don't, like, go to me for theories. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after Robin Hood steals this wand, um, Belle enters the situation, and she says, you don't know what is in someone's heart until you truly know them. And this is something that we just briefly mentioned, but it's something that the entire episode is really based upon. Right. Um, her kind of figuring out who's good and bad, and it seems like she has a good intuition as Belle. Maybe not so much as Lacey. No, not as Lacey. But um, Gold decides he wants to kill Robin Hood for stealing this wand. He wants to torture him. Well, skinning him. Skinning him. Skin him, yes. skinning him. Like um, a crocodile. Yeah, good point. Exactly. <laughs> you exactly. you mentioned like you peeped during that, yeah, that quote, and I was like, I wonder yeah. what she's going to say, but... Just, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Gold, or Rumple, still very evil at this point, wants to torture Robin Hood first. Belle helps Robin Hood escape, and Gold, Rumple, is not happy about that. He says he wants to kill him with his own, own bow and arrow, which is a magical bow mm. and arrow that can magically seek out its target. Yeah. Which is why Robin Hood is so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah he doesn't have skill. He's just like <laughs> magic. <laughs> Robin Hood's quite the marksman. I would like to see a uh, arrow off, a shoot off <laughs> between uh, yes. Snow White oh. and Robin Hood. Oh, oh that's without good. the magical bow. See who's better. Yeah, because remember in um, Selfless, Brave, and True, and she's just like out in the woods getting yeah, her she anger out. She's just it. going for it. She looked like Katniss or someone. Just like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> So I just rewatched that episode earlier, and when she was doing it, I was like, yes! Is no. that the same episode where they go back to the undamaged area of Enchanted Forest, and she's just like, she takes out an arrow, and she hits an ogre right in the eye, and Emma's like, 
how long has it been since you've done a bow and arrow? And she's like, 28, 28 years. years. I guess it's just like riding like a bike. Second episode of yeah, the series. Yeah, episode, but yeah. This season. Of she's this just season, so, yeah. She's so yeah. good with that bow. Mm -hmm. And that would be kind of cool to see them kind mm -hmm. of battle I know it, it would be, right? I, I wonder how much we'll see of Robin Hood going forward. I mean, we definitely know that the Sheriff of Nottingham is in Storybrooke. It'd be interesting mm -hmm. to see, yeah, if he has a more pivotal role. Yeah, yeah and we also got a glimpse of Lady Marion. So I think we'll see more of this Robin Hood storyline. She looks Hood a lot different than I would expect her to look. A lot of the characters way. looked a lot different. I know. Sheriff <laughs> Nottingham, supposed to be an ugly dude. He was not. Mm -hmm. He was not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, just... just, just. <laughs> We're having girl moment. Yeah. Oh my god. We'll, we'll try to refrain from that. Okay, we return, returning. <laughs> return. So, Gold <laughs> takes Belle out on the hunt for Robin Hood, and while he's on his quest to kill him, and on their quest, they come across the Sheriff of Nottingham, who is also in the bar later in the episode, and he says he will tell Rumpel where Robin Hood is if he can have a knight with her wench. His wench. Rumpel's not Oh, a his wench, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, and... Go grammar. <laughs> <laughs> I had it written wrong. I have to type very fast. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> oh, <laughs> apparently I'm not. <laughs> so Rumpel magically takes out Sheriff of Nottingham's tongue and says, the wench is not for sale. I'll give this back to you if you tell me where Robin Hood is. I thought it was funny that the sheriff was like, oh, okay, 20 minutes? <laughs> 20 <laughs> minutes, right? <laughs> a little bit. The time just kept going he down. Just, like, oh, right. did not care. He just the piece of a woman for a second. <laughs> that reminded me a lot of some of the pirates in Pirates of the Caribbean. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just how skeezy yeah. they are. Yeah. Really? And drunk. And it turns out his character, or I guess he has his memories back as the sheriff of Nottingham, but he's well, very he, similar in both worlds. I guess so. Yeah. yeah he he's just have. drunk, yeah. so he doesn't yeah. remember yeah. who he yeah. is. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> but I think, you know, taking out his tongue was very graphic. I thought so, too. Wow. Well, you could that, 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 that was kind of dark. I no. mean, it was very dark, but it's not like we saw blood. No, gross, no, but you, you actually saw the tongue like writhing. Ew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, writhing. Is writhing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you. What'd you think of that tongue part? I thought that it uh, it it was very tonguey. I don't know. <laughs> it, it it wasn't like graphic for me because it's not like you saw him like take out a knife or something and just like mm -hmm. slice it off. He just True. used magic. I feel like when they mm. take out the hearts, that's almost more graphic than really? taking out a tongue. Yeah. The yeah. heart looks like candy to me. I don't. There's just <laughs> when it's, it's all, glowing. It's maybe. all glowy. It's the glow candy. It's my favorite kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, the heart's more physical. If you think about it, you're actually like plunging your hand yeah, into a there. chest, whereas when he took out the t tongue, you know, it was just one false swoop of the hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. When they go so. for the heart, sometimes I grab my chest, like just to make sure that, like, <laughs> that your heart's no still there. No, my heart's still it. there because yeah. I see them shoving their hand in there and just like I feel it I yeah. feel the pain mm -hmm. of someone doing that to you I don't know and it also reminds me of um, Indiana Jones because oh yeah uh, Temple yeah. of Doom mm -hmm. Temple of Doom that's, Boom. That I remember scene. seeing that as a kid and, yeah. and, and grabbing my chest too like, oh my gosh we just <laughs> Kalima <laughs> Kalima <laughs> yeah. um, so <laughs> this situation ends up where Rumble's about to kill Robin Hood after they find him, after the whole incident with Sheriff of Nottingham. And Belle, of course, who's with him, says, you can't kill him. He's helping this woman. That is why he stole the wand. Mm -hmm. Turns out that this woman is... Breggers! <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. That too. Um, so little Robin Hood baby is on the way. <laughs> and he saved her. He saved her life. Lady Marion. So... Robin Hood, of He's course, always doing yeah, the he, best thing possible. He did steal the Ma Lady Marion from homie. I mean, I feel <laughs> like he you steals. Can, he yeah, steal yeah. her. For the right, she wanted him. Yeah, over, yeah I know. He you. has good intentions. I'm exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, like, it's like, come on, <laughs> Sheriff Nottingham. Like, right. no one stole that woman from you because she's choosing to stay in the forest. He was all as having, opposed like, to like where you live. Twenty minutes. So I mean, <laughs> what kind of man is he? And it's yeah. not like the bling ring. He's not just stealing from people to steal from people. Yeah, it's right. like because there's an actual purpose. Yeah. So there's always good intentions in an ulterior motive. Because Robin Hood's thing was always to steal from the rich to give to the poor. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So um, he's helping out. 
So Belle tries to stop Rumpel, and she says, you are not the type of man to leave a child fatherless. Ooh. Very interesting, because he was the man to leave his own child fatherless. Oh, I But mean. that strikes a chord. Yes, that's probably what it is. Mm -hmm. It's struck a chord. Exactly. That struck a chord, and he pulls the bow and arrow and misses the target, mm -hmm. which we know that bow and arrow is magic and cannot miss its intended target. Therefore, the target was something different. Mm -hmm. The and, crate, uh, the poor crate, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hit me with it? Oh no. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so it hits the crate, and Bell realizes that he's a good guy. Says, "You aren't who I thought you were," and hugs him. That chick falls in love pretty quick, though. You know. I mean, um, you know, you see the bad boy becoming <laughs> good boy, and it's because, all because of, of you. you. Yeah, because I of think you. that with every girl. I mean. <laughs> I can see how she might start thinking, oh, you know, you're not actually as bad as I thought you were. And she's already stuck with him for the rest of her life. So right. might, as well, <laughs> might as well actually Point like taken. the guy you're stuck with. Point but taken. I think that's Belle's character, you know, really true to character. She's always trying to find the good in people. So and she, mm. she saw this glimpse of a good side to Rumpel, therefore she fell for him mm -hmm. a bit. Yes. And Rumpel returns the favor in, um, you know, her helping him become a good guy by giving her a library in his castle. And it's just another room to clean, man. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Way to ruin a moment, man. Uh, well, I mean, he's <laughs> saying that because he doesn't want to seem like a good guy, but... Yeah, he's so but, used to being evil that it's hard for him to indicate that he's a good guy. So mm -hmm. he keeps cloaking it with, I'm still evil, FYI, mm -hmm. so don't mess yeah. with me. But I, I do want to do this for you. Yeah. So, um, Benjamin, how caught up are you on Once Upon a Time? You've just seen got, all of it? I, I, no, I just got into it, man. Yeah. And I can't stop watching now. It's really it's addicting, addicting, right? <laughs> yeah. And we have, like, all of these worlds, mm -hmm. so we do That's get a lot of flashbacks, and tonight we got a fl flashback, and then we also saw Golden Bell in present-day Storybrooke. Um, before we get into that, I just want to mention very quickly, if you're watching us on YouTube or watching us on AfterBuzzTV.com live, then make sure to also head over to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast from there. Only takes a second, and then you can also rate and comment. We really do read all of your comments, and we love, you know, trying to improve and taking all of that to heart. So please take a second to go rate and comment. Five stars are awesome. Um, we also, very recently, I'm really excited about this, yes. we <laughs> found out how to stream our video and podcasts live from um, your very own iPhone or iPad. Or so, Androids. Yes. yes. Or Androids, too. Wow. So if you have a phone, an iPad, you can check us out live. Um, whether you're on public transit, in a car, hopefully not driving. Um, <laughs> not driving. But yeah, on not the go, driving. if you're on the go, you can listen to all of our podcasts live. So, jumping in to Gold and Bell, they're celebrating, well, first, um, just Storybrooke in general, um, they're celebrating Henry's birthday. And it's like a big, happy family. Everyone's there, they have a cake. Yep. He's blowing out the candles. Gold tells him he can pick whatever he wants in the shop. Turns out to be the wand that we saw earlier. And Gold turns him into porcelain and then Smash. breaks him apart. Yes. Nah. Very, that was, I felt like, more graphic than the tongue scene. Well, you just killed your grandchild. Well, it would be more graphic if he wasn't turned into porcelain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But... Because, you know, it's just porcelain. It's probably very graphic for porcelain, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're like, what the heck, man? <laughs> <laughs> this actually reminded me of, um, Marissa, you and I saw the the new uh, Oz movie yes. recently. And mm -hmm. there's a whole family of porcelain, porcelain dolls, and they all break. Yep. But porcelain dolls are kind of creepy. China yeah. dolls. They're mm -hmm. like little yeah. China people. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, and we find out... This was all a dream. So, of course. Thank goodness. Of goodness. <laughs> I called it for like two yeah. seconds. And I feel like they start with so many dreams and they try to trick you that they've done this so many times that you just kind of know instantaneously if something like that happens, 
It's a dream. If everyone seems to be getting along in like a happy family, it's probably a dream because this family yeah. just can't do that. If one yeah, of the right. main characters gets killed, it's probably a dream. <laughs> but it still shows you like that all those because dreams are kind of tr- based on reality and truth. So there, there's an underlying story that like that could happen. Or he's still thinking yes. about it. I mean, it. that's okay. what he's imagining. So. It's the same. Um, there was another dream several episodes ago in this season where Regina tried to choke out little Snow White yeah. with the necklace. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's something that they want, and it seems like Gold is struggling with this, whether to kill Henry, because, I mean, that is the prophecy. Either he's mm-hmm. going to kill mm-hmm. you or you kill him. Mm-hmm. I hope they both survive. I'm wondering if it's a different boy. Yeah, I'm that's in the prophecy. That'd be like, cool. Yeah, I want it to be like there was a twist in the yeah. prophecy of like mm-hmm. it's not. It can't just be Henry. Like there has to be some other alternative to. Or maybe yeah, Gold ends up turning good and he sacrifices yeah. himself, but Henry is the one who has to or may- initiate that. Yeah. Or the maybe his downfall. The doesn't really point in that direction, now does it? He <laughs> is turning evil again. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe well, the maybe the downfall of him is just him not being Ruffin Stilson anymore. I love And his losing skin. his powers? Yeah, him like... We have seen a couple people die who have come back to life. <coughs> August. <laughs> well, I'm, st- I'm <laughs> thinking about those magic beings that just started coming to play, and that might be a way to make people come back as well. Yeah. Resurrect people. I don't know. It could. It crossed my mind. I mean, so. yeah. I feel like there is more and more magic coming to Storybrooke. So... Yeah, anything is possible. We're seeing more possibilities of magic, like potions and um, more curses that are available, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it seems like if you aren't magical, there is a way to potentially get magic if those wands are in Storybrooke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those wands, and the wands have healing powers. Yes. So. Mm-hmm. <sighs> It'd be interesting to see how those play out. Yes. Because basically nothing's nothing's like done yet like anything can happen in storybook i think is what we're all noticing yeah and that, all like, it doesn't yeah it doesn't matter if you think someone's dead someone's good or evil it's surprising yeah <laughs> every single episode you. i find it interesting how the wands were just out there in the open where we haven't seen them before and how many people have passed in and yeah, out right? of the shop. And, and I was wondering if there was anything, I know it was a dream, but if there was anything in that shop that would have been off limits. Mm-hmm. Like if there was something mm-hmm. of Bayes or, mm-hmm. I don't know, that he just wanted to keep. But it was a dream, so yeah. things like that happen. So Gold goes to visit Belle in Storybrooke, and she is in the hospital still after losing all of her memories. He says... Um, I mean, she says, I know I have a past, and I know that that my past probably included you. I remember you healing me. So she does have some memories. Seems like things are coming back to her. And Gold says to her, you brought out the best in me. I will help you bring back your memories both for you and for me. Very touching moment. It seems like there's hope. And then Regina comes in and ruins all of it. Well, she's yep. so upset Pester. that she had no idea that he- Henry is related directly to Rumpelstiltskin. She's just like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, <laughs> okay, Regina, you were kind of busy, like, not really talking to everyone you, over yeah. here. So. I mean, he was right. If he, she was busy trying to kill his family. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, I mean, that's why you didn't know, but... Regina being the malicious person that she is, you know, has to go ruin the only person who can actually help Mr. Yeah, Gold. That, like, I felt really bad for him when that happened. Yeah. I felt bad for Belle, too. So, Benjamin, I know that Regina is your favorite character, yes. and I want to ask you why. It's <laughs> 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 just, you know, She's not always malicious. She sometimes feels regret. Like, Mm -hmm. there's always that little sliver of good in her. Mm -hmm. Always. Well, not this time. I mean, this time she was the evil freaking queen. She she, she just, like, took her. And she doesn't show a single sliver of regret. Like, Mm -hmm. she doesn't care. Like, let's say when she took Owen from his father, she showed regret. But in everything else, she shows regret. But just... 
Here, she she didn't. It seems like mm -hmm. she turns it on and off. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a light switch. And it's the same with Rumpel. I mean, this episode, yeah. we saw a sliver of good in him, but in many episodes, he's just completely evil. I think she only turns it on for herself. If mm -hmm. she is to gain something out of it, she would be good towards other people, but if it was to hurt or, like, hinder someone else and, like, them trying to get something that they want, then she'd be evil. I think we yeah. see the, the good in her when she's around Henry, when she was around Owen, and... Mm -hmm. We see the good in mm -hmm. Rumpel when he's around Belle, not around Lacey, and <laughs> when he's around uh, Bay. Neil or Bay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, we, uh, we got to understand that Regina just lost her mother. That's all I was going to say. No one's, no one's trusting her and in Storybrooke. So. And it was, and it was and, Snow's, I mean, Snow might have done it, but it was, she knows that Rumpel is the one who put exactly. Snow, put the idea in Snow's head and had the candle to begin with. So uh, getting a little bit of revenge for that, for her I mom, think so. I think that's why she's going after Rumpel right now. Revenge I was trying gets to think. you nowhere. Yeah. Revenge you. doesn't get you anywhere. That's a good lesson exactly. to learn. I mean, she didn't, she didn't kill Belle. She just deterring her from remembering. So, yeah. yeah. But again, yeah, Regina did isolate herself from everyone else. So that's probably why she didn't know, oh, Rumpel still skins. Yeah. Henry's grandfather. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so Regina drops some matches um, when she's helping Belle remember who she is. And these matches are for a bar called the Rabbit Hole, which is another place where I feel like we've never seen in Storybrooke, just pops up. Yes. Yep. That's where all the shady people hang out. And people <laughs> okay. like Mary Margaret, Good and Wholesome, do not go to bars like that. I no. wouldn't go there. <laughs> it seems like Red might have gone there. And I, feel like, I feel like Ruby, Ruby spent some Ruby. time over there. <laughs> she walks in there, everyone's She's like, hey, there. Ruby, what's up, girl? <laughs> Long time no see you. Right. Um, so, Lacey, which is Belle, she regains her memories as Lacey, which is apparently um, her storybook character that was insane and locked up for 28 years. Yeah, we didn't know that. Uh -huh. Um, no well, we, we always kind of questioned if she had an identity in Storybrooke mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. she was just Belle the entire time but was in an insane asylum. And we learn now that she was Lacey, who is clearly deranged. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I can see why she was deranged. in an institution. Uh, so she heads on over to the magic or the, the rabbit hole and... Uh, Remembering her different life, she's a pool shark and mm. drinks a lot, hits on a, or gets hit on by a lot of guys, and it <laughs> seems like does her own share of that as well. Don't you think these people from Storybrooke would be like, hey, you are not this person. This is a person that when you were this person, you were in the insane asylum. Well, none of them other than Rumple, know that she's there. What about sh the sh sheriff guy? I think the sheriff is too drunk to remember anything, and <laughs> yeah. he just wants to make out with her. Drunk he was the first time. <laughs> I don't. I think he has ulterior motives. So clearly, he likes Racy or er, Racy Lacy <laughs> better Lacey. than. Uh, Wait, yeah. what about Granny? Yeah. Well, Granny, oh. where is she? She was Granny did she was mention Granny was oh, yeah. on their date. She went, "Whoa, have you been shopping in Ruby's closet? Like, what happened <laughs> yeah. to you?" Yeah. You raid Ruby's and, closet. Yeah, so I think Granny, you know, that was kind of her way of oh. saying, like, "Hey, what's going on?" But then at the same time, those people all know that you know she has no memories and right. so mm -hmm. if this is who she's kind of going into you can't really force someone to remember mm -hmm. because but it's a dangerous person it's a, yeah it's like a, david could have been like hey you are not this person i mean she probably would have continued to be lacy but it's still yeah but i mean if you believe to your core that that is the person you are and people keep telling you you're not this person mm -hmm. i think that's just going to make you more angry and like yeah. you'll end up exploding on them and you know doing something crazy and i don't think that them. lacy's character really cares about what anyone sure. says about yeah. her <laughs> So, well, I'll tell is, you guys what. If I ever become a Lacey, please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I kind of liked Lacey. Oh, yeah, a little I kinda, bit. I kinda not, not all of it, but I thought it was kind of fun to see her, you know, let loose. Let loose a really? little bit. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I, liked, I liked Lacey's clothing because every, I Loves noticed her that uh, her clothes were darker blue. And the bell that we know, I'm, you know, I'm specifically thinking Disney bell, mm -hmm. um, that she's in a lighter sky blue type mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. So it's just, it's the same person technically, but a darker side. Hmm. Yeah. And I like. Got a dark side. 
<laughs> so they he doesn't do. dance, but he will True. sing. Uh, okay. That's good. <laughs> I think we should have a dance off later. Oh my god, no. <laughs> no. I think so. Um, so these are her curse memories, according to Regina. And um she just, I mean, we talked about it. She's just yeah. letting loose. She's a wild child, doesn't really care what anyone um, says about her. And Regina tells Rumpel that the only reason why he's on his best behavior is because of his son. And um, he's not going to take revenge on her because that's not who he really is. Do we believe that? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, I think that he's going to find a way to uh, get her memories back by using Regina, but that's yeah. a f prediction. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that he doesn't want to lose his son again, whether it's losing <clears throat> him, you know, because he leaves Storybrooke or losing him because he realizes how bad a person Rumpel is. But I feel like he's never really done anything for Neil. It's always been for Belle. Like, Belle was mm -hmm. the only one who could get him to change. It wasn't ever... Well, I think like yeah. by that point, Bay was long gone. By the way, I don't want to lose Bay either. I really like him. <laughs> but Bay, I mean, he pleaded so much to try to get Rumple to not be the dark one, mm -hmm. and yeah. there Several was, times. you know, nothing that he could do about it. Well, it's kind of like I feel like parents just don't really listen to their child as a peer. So that's kind of the that's issue. There was like, you're just a child. You don't mm -hmm. know what I'm doing for you. Whatever. Yeah. So he's always a coward. Yeah. Gold mm -hmm. wonders whether true love's kiss can break the spell that is on Belle. And he enlists David for help because David is an expert in this area. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> he has saved Snow from many a, a, a spell. <laughs> Those two, I tell you. Yeah. I loved how he brought up, you know, the fact that you know, when David was David and Mary Margaret was just Mary Margaret, even their cursed selves, like, still kind of were attracted to each other mm -hmm. and kept finding each other and wanted to be together. So I liked how he, you know, went to David with, like, that sort of plan. Like, hey, yeah. you know, I need to know how you did it because I'm trying to get the love of my life back yeah. now. See, and that sucks because mm -hmm. Belle isn't, uh, she isn't naturally, well, as this Lacey, she's not naturally attracted to him at all mm -hmm. without her memories. So I don't know how it's going to happen. Well... I think we saw She's that. attracted <laughs> to a different side exactly. of him. Exactly. Like, she's attracted to Mr. Gold, not Rumpel. Or, like, yeah. I he is both. Right. I, know. I, like, <laughs> I like him as, you know. Yeah. I like how Lacey is so different from the Belle that we know because it just makes Rumpel work harder and just to prove himself that he can possibly be a good guy. He's yeah. working hard for his true love. So. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's surprised that she likes him all dark. He's like, yeah. oh, okay, mm -hmm. let me use this cane and... Like, okay, I'm willing to go to the dark side for, the, for my true love. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing that's very interesting, um, when Rumpel enlisted or Gold enlisted David for this help, he says, for the first time ever, I'm going to owe you a favor. Yes. I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. So what what do you think that this favor could be beer. in the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Buy me a beer. Buy me a beer. <laughs> I, th I think it might be something to do with returning to fairy, fairy mm -hmm. tale land. Yeah. Exactly. Or potentially saving a life. Who's I mean, life? if we know that gold or Henry eventually has to die. Or helping eliminate mm. the, the young boy. N or, not, not so much killing, but just like help find this guy, or this young boy who could be the end. Or fixing Rumpel. Snow's heart. So it's oh. not blackened anymore. Oh, yeah. that's good. There are a lot of things that this favor could be. I'm excited to see what it yes, is. I hope we find out this season. Yeah, because um, what, what was, oh, how Mr. Gold held on to the favor that Emma, Emma owed him for like, Two and a, for like a season and a yeah. half. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, man, I forgot she owed you something. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's just proof that you can use your favor at any time. It doesn't. There's no expiration, expiration date. Yeah. Um. So, Golden David head to the rabbit hole and visit Lacey, who is racy at this time. Wants to listen to some Van Halen. Lacey, Lacey. <laughs> get her drink on. And uh, Gold asks Lacey out on a date. That goes well. <laughs> it does, surprisingly. I mean, she says yes. Later, we find out that she just said yes 
because she felt sorry for gold. I would okay. never say yes to be nice. That is two hours of my life. I would never be able to take back. <laughs> I know a lot okay, of girls well. that just go on dates to get free meals, which I think is so gross. That's, that's, that's Match.com right terrible. there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like the Match.com girls actually want love. They're not going on dates because then you have to spend whatever money on the membership. It's like 30 bucks a month and then you get free meals. Uh, hey guys, um, I'm a Match.com girl. <laughs> Let's calm it down. Let's calm it down. Um, I'm sorry. Guys. I thought this whole thing was about once upon a time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're getting off topic here. Um, so, Val and Gold go on this date, and he says, I heard that you heard that I was a bad guy. And um, when people come across me, they get hurt. And she seemed a little bit turned on by that. A um, little. <laughs> yeah. But then he messes it up and spills his drink. And she goes to the bathroom to get some water to clean it up, I guess. That was, yeah. Yeah. That um, excuse, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Excuse. And leaves. Just and dishes just him on a Nikki. date. Yep. I mean, didn't even go far. I mean, she yeah. she would rather go make out with a guy by a dumpster. Who she than, already exactly. Yeah, yes. Yes. Don't sit yeah. at a booth with you. Like, that is hard. With yeah. chicken parm. Yeah. <laughs> That's chicken broth. Par- chicken parm and a whole bottle of wine in her glass. Like, yeah. she was... I loved when he stopped at the normal pour mm-hmm. and she grabbed the bottle and just filled it up to the rim. That was awesome. <laughs> like that is that is a girl after my do own you, heart. Do you guys think I just thought of this, but you know how she said she only decided to go on a date with him to be nice, but she heard all these rumors about him. And when she found out the rumors were true, it turned her on. So maybe she wanted to go on a date with him to see if these rumors were true because she was intrigued by yeah. this guy. And being then when he was saying, no, it's not When true. he was yeah. such a nice guy on the date. Yeah, she was like, wait a minute, oh, you're nice. Lame. I'm, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, so the thing that turns her on is when she sees Gold beating the heck out yes. of a, yes. sheriff Notting- a sheriff of Nottingham. Sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah. Yeah. Did we ever get a name for him? I don't think story? so. I don't think he ever... Uh, Nottingham's cool. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. call him Chuck. Okay, <laughs> I like so Chuck. Chuck. Let's go with that. Yes. So he beats him senseless. Chuck. In this, he beats, he, he he beats Chuck, Chuck senseless. senseless. <laughs> Takes his tongue out again so in that the no dark one can hear him. Yes. No one can hear you scream. And Very violent. <laughs> Lacey says, it is true what they say about you. You are not who I thought you were. Second time we heard that this episode. And I'm glad. Yeah. And that she's so That's glad. Crazy. Different yeah. context this time. In her glitter yeah. blue dress. Yeah. Not in a good way. What do you think about this, Benjamin? You like the <laughs> you do you like the evil rumple or no, the, no, no, the no, nice uh, rumple? Uh, he better he better go nice again because that I'm just, just, just I don't like evil. I yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I am on the side of good, not evil. <laughs> but you like Regina. I do like Regina, but you see, I like her because she has her moments of good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you think yeah, Rumpel doesn't And she also have acts, those? acts um, well, he does, he does, mm-hmm. I'm going to admit. He's just not right now. Yeah. Okay. Who's your favorite character so far? Regina. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. High five over there. <laughs> um, and Fair high five. Yes. And this just in, one of our Twitter followers, Rose, just tweeted me and said that Mary Margaret, Ruby, and Ashley, who was Cinderella, went to the rabbit hole for the Valentine's Day episode in oh, season one. Well, they, oh, that, that was the rabbit hole. Well, yeah, thank the you. Well, the that thank is a very you. long time ago. The place they went Good to seem a little bit mm-hmm. more, you know, Racy? No, no, no. It seems like a, like a regular <laughs> restaurant, not a bar. But I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it bars more, are restaurants during the day. Than the it was just dressed up for Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah. Yeah. They had that place had more class. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna get into this whole Storybrooke family that is forming now that Neil is back in the picture. We have both of Henry's <laughs> parents. We have the grandparents. From both sides. The, the step grandparent, who's also your mom, your yeah. adoptive mother. I mean, it's just so cute. It's absolutely <laughs> crazy. It is very difficult to figure out who is related to who and how, but it works. It's a modern day family okay. in a fairy tale setting. And um, it starts off with Henry and Neil playing swords together cute. in the park. Aww. So adorable. Aww. Did you get to interact with um, Jared Gilmer? Yes. Uh, we were in school together, so yeah. They have know. a school there? Well, it's uh, uh, on set. On set. Who mm. else is in it? 
Or just you two? It was just me and him. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. He's a cool guy. Yeah. He's so cool. you guys are the same age, right? Yeah. Uh, I think he's 13. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, Jared, if you're listening. To <laughs> <laughs> Around the same age. You're 12. <laughs> yeah. If he's 13. Um, very close in age. And um, so Gold and Regina realize that they're co-grandparents. Regina's a little bit more upset about this. She and as she should be? Yeah, she yes. Why should she, she be? Right? Because she wants to be his mother, but now she's a grandmother. It's confusing. It's it's confusing. I just said it twice. Yeah. <laughs> That's how confusing it is. I'm confused. How is she the grandmother again? Because she's Snow's stepmom. That's right. Okay. So she's Ooh. the step. Great grandmother, yes. actually. Um, that's way that, too much that's just how confusing it is. Is, is, is you have to put great in it because you realize, oh, I said it wrong the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's hard because you know all the actors are all like the same age, so you're looking <laughs> right. at these people and you're like, there's no way that you're not all just sisters yeah. or something. Exactly. One, of like, great, one of our other one of our other followers tweeted me about um, E. Scott McDougall tweeted me about a family tree. Um, that they have going online for the Once Upon a Time characters, and it kind of keeps track of everyone, but it's still very to, confusing. You would yeah. Yeah. You need to update yeah. that a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you would think having like such a big family would have them all try to get along, but there's always kinks involved in this big family. But magic mm -hmm. always gets in the way of that. Darn that magic. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I wonder, I wonder if they had told Regina when they first got back with you know, Neil slash Bay there. If they had come to her when Cora was still around and said, hey, listen, change of events happened while we were in New York. This is the new information that we have, how her reaction would have been then as compared to finding out, you know, through the grapevine. They didn't have time, like though. Yeah, they yeah. didn't have time, but it's just one of those things to, yeah. you know, in an alternate universe, yeah. which well, clearly once upon a time needs more alternate <laughs> universes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In another alternate universe to see if they could have all tried to get along for like the sake of family yeah. at that point. Um, Marissa and I have actually been watching season two over again, yeah. and we've been watching these episodes back to back, and it's so crazy because while we watch them real time, week to week, we don't realize when we were watching them back to back how quick everything is happening. Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of these episodes potentially are in the same day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you just don't think about that. So very little time has really gone by since they've gone gotten back from New York. I yes. think that's just yeah. exactly why that's all it's been two days since they've been back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean it really could have been. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, along with confronting Gold, Regina also confronts Emma, and she says, you know, when were you going to tell me about Neil and Rumpel, and that we're all somehow related? <laughs> <laughs> and Regina also says, I know you're hiding something else. I wanted to hurt Emma when she said that. When she said, you know, like, oh, before you leave him for good. Like, don't even hint around yeah. anything around right. Regina because she will figure it out. Yeah. It confused the crud out of me. I'm like, wait, how did you get it from that? <laughs> they all have this intuition. I feel like yeah. almost every single character has an intuition where they can either tell whether someone's lying or if they're good, if they're bad. It's just an innate Because after she said it, Emma kind of like looked down like before you lose him forever. It was mm -hmm. like a tell of like, oh, I'm lying. But Emma made a good point that Regina is always thinks her mindset is that people are out to get her mm -hmm. and there's something um, evil, no pun intended, brewing. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, you know, that she thinks from a place of darkness that, um, you know, something bad and then where Emma is the good and she's like, no, there's something positive. We're not scheming. Everyone's not out to get you. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> We're now not, it's all making sense? Now, now it's, yeah. it, she's like, oh yeah, we're not just like scheming like you should like, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so probably one of the cutest scenes of the entire episode and a scene that they released uh, online before the episode aired was Neil bringing Henry home. Henry is thrown over Neil's shoulder, completely <laughs> passed out, looked like he had been tranquilized, and Emma comments on it. And... You it, ever was, had a kid. That's it was true. cute. I mean, yeah. sure. they just met each other, but clearly they've bonded so much mm -hmm. over the last potentially two or three <laughs> days. We don't know how long it's been. Um, and Emma and Neil have this conversation, 
Emma says, Neil, have you ever thought about going back? Mm -hmm. yeah. To the future. <laughs> to the future. Well, to the past. <laughs> to the past. To yeah. where he was. And I liked how he said, you know, I didn't really have a storybook upbringing. Yeah. Which, mm -hmm. you know, cute little. And he has like a, there. a fiance now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it'd be kind of hard for him to leave <laughs> all of that. And, you know, his memories of being there are horrible because, you know, his dad was the dark one. He was abandoned mm. down a bean hole and all this stuff. So I could see why he wouldn't want to go back. Mm -hmm. But I also kind of see how Emma's maybe thinking of wanting to go there because she's had that kind of life here. Right. So yeah. she wants a fresh start. But we have been t alluded, you know, well, we're speculating that um, Neil has been to another world. It might be Neverland. So he Definitely might, Neverland. He might have <laughs> yeah. kind of lived that life so if he wanted to go back it might be to that world not to back to the old fairy tale land yeah. i i want to see neil interact a lot more with rumple because i think that at this point since bell is kind of pulling rumple to the dark side maybe neil might be the one to save him because i'm a rumple girl as you guys know so <laughs> i don't know i just really want to see neil and rumple bond yeah at this point. yeah neil might be the other person who would bring good out of rumple yeah Rather than Bill. He's the only so. other person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless Henry can help too. But or, or David's mm -hmm. favor. Yes. <laughs> so I was thinking about the third kid on set would be uh, young August or Pinocchio, right? Who, what, yeah. Do we know his name? I'm trying to think. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. No, no, no. Oh. I mean the actor's, oh, the actor's name. name. I was like, oh, no, I don't. Know I can't his name. even think about it right now. Um, Sorry. But they mentioned very briefly that young Pinocchio and August, or August and um, Henry, hit it off at the park, which I thought was so funny. Yes. And it's, it's definitely. I know it's taking the characters a while to get used to it, but it's also taking me as a viewer. A while to get used to it. Okay. Like I don't want to think of him as yeah, like a I youngster. And yeah, I had like a month to let it sink in that you know <laughs> August is now back to being a little boy. But yeah. when hearing it, I was still like, why was August playing with Henry at the park? That's kind of weird. <laughs> oh yeah, he's back to being like a ten-year-old boy. But at I least got it. Henry has another friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they find they, they. I'm I'm pretty sure when they made him a little kid, they're probably like. Oh my God! There needs to be another kid in Storybrooke. Henry's all alone here. Exactly. <laughs> well, I've always kind Smart. of I've wondered about that because he would have been. I mean, we know that Henry came to Storybrooke when he was a baby, and that time didn't start until Emma got there mm -hmm. when he was ten years old. So, what other kids did he have to hang out with? He like everyone is reliving the same day over and over again, mm -hmm. potentially, and he's growing up. Well, he had what Hansel and Gretel. A little bit. Yeah. But they were, I mean, from when he was one year old to five years old to ten years old, all of these kids That's stay true. the same age. Yeah. Yes, there are other kids there, but you don't really grow up having the same friends because the friend that you were when, uh, that you had when you were two is still two when you're 10. Well, that's probably why he went to a uh, psychiatrist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I really well, want to see yeah. more of that develop. Well, um, okay. Addie and Adam, the co-creators, they did an interview and they did kind of address that and they said that they addressed it in season one, which basically explained that because Henry was so young, you know, kids don't really notice age mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or how old people are. So it wasn't until he got the book and he got a little bit older when he was 10 is when he started started noticing, you know, especially the adults, none of them were aging. Yeah. And so that's kind of when he was like, hey, wait a minute, there's something off here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So quickly want to talk about the magic beans. Mm -hmm. And. We've been discussing, you know, are they going to go back to the Enchanted Forest? Well, they've been harvesting these beans for a while now. And David and Mary Margaret take Emma to see the crop of these magical beans. It's under a protection spell, so no one can find it. But it turns out... Protection spell. Regina yeah, can. Air quotes. Quotes. She quotes. outsmarted them. As um, always. Yeah, so... she's awesome. She well, always she breaks is. through the protection spell. She broke through gold. It wasn't yeah. a protection spell, though. I it feel like it was just a masking yeah. spell that uh, Mother Superior put up, so she couldn't see it, but she could track... It was, like, the very, very much the same kind of cloaking, masking spell that was on the ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like they, there should be a specific... You know, like, keep this person out. Like, yeah, they yeah. should have been a little more conniving about it. 
But then the other thing I realized was that absolutely no one in town knew about it either because when they went to pick up lunch from Granny's, they were, and they ordered their dishes with no beans, they're like, oh, what are you guys up to? And they just kind of said, oh, you know, just working hard. Tired you know, of beans. Granny had a hunch, too. Yeah, Granny had a granny hunch, like something was off up. here. And I was like, I didn't realize at that moment that absolutely no one else no knew one about the... No one can keep a secret. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to no come out. No one else knew. Yeah. Also didn't realize that Mary, or that Emma, didn't know that Tiny was in town because, Anton, yeah. yeah. I forgot I mean, that she wasn't around for that. That's right. Yeah. She wasn't that in Storybrook while when She's he... like, why are you so small? <laughs> <laughs> it's Regina's fault. <laughs> um, so there is this struggle whether to go back to the Enchanted Forest, and I feel like we are going to see that develop even more so. in the last three episodes. Mm -hmm. it seems like Gregory and Tamara are really interested mm. in the magic <laughs> that the Enchanted Forest has. And that is our last topic of the night before we have our special segment. Yay. And But don't forget, we saw Hook. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah that that's, that's in this topic, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so Gregory and Tamara, um, I mean, we really didn't get to see a lot of them this episode, just very brief mm -hmm. snippets. Um, they, you know... We saw that make out a couple of weeks ago, and that just scarred me for life. Uh, and then we saw another glance. Yeah, that did scar like, me. Mm, yeah. Where did my life go so wrong? <laughs> well, I feel sick now. I Thanks. feel like <laughs> so part of the reason why Gregory and Tamara are there is to find Gregory's dad. Mm -hmm. Your dad. Uh huh. Your well, mm -hmm. Owen. Your character dad. Yeah. And Wasn't um, it Kurt. 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 Flynn. Kurt. Yeah. Kurt, yeah. Kurt yeah. Flynn. Yes. Like. Um, Tron. Ah. Oh, I, yes, I've like seen Tron. so many yeah. people say that on Twitter. Yeah. You're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is so like Kurt Flynn from Tron. His his dad's like lost in the grid, and he goes to find him. It's just like story broken. Oh, and it's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the creators do pull a lot of things from different Disney yeah. and in, they wrote the and, newest yeah. Tron movie, right? Oh, yeah. I believe so. Yeah, I they, yeah. they that, wrote it, that's so that's kind of why they. That makes sense. Made an homage to that, too. If you don't listen to the Creators podcast, it's really good. It's only about 10 minutes long every single week. They have that up on iTunes yeah. as well. So it's a very good companion to this podcast. I highly recommend listening to I it. I listen to it every week. Yeah. <laughs> um, so flash forward to the end of the episode, and we see Tamara and Greg again. She's bringing a package into Storybrooke, which fits in a mm -hmm. huge trailer. Um, I don't know if there's another package, but Hook is gagged in the back of the trailer. With socks. We wondered where he was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because um, Tamara told Neil that Hook had escaped from his basement and when she went down there to get her thing. So she's lying about that, and Hook's actually here. And I feel like... Hook's getting a little bit a taste of his own medicine because in Neverland, <laughs> you always see Hook tying up the Lost mm, Boys. Yeah. So it's kind of what goes around comes around. I mean, I actually feel bad for Hook. I really don't like Tam Tamara. I don't I don't either. like her heart I don't either. like her at all. I'm like, I don't think I've ever not liked yeah. someone so She's badly. She's so mm -hmm. shady. Yeah. She has no sliver of good in her. Yeah. I think this yeah. is the first character where I can say there is no good in her. Is she worse than Rumble mm -hmm. for you guys? She's out. Or something. Oh, she's she definitely is she's yeah. worse than Rumpel for me. She's worse than Regina. She's yeah. worse than any of the evil characters. I I want to say she's on Cora's level. I I think mm -hmm. I, the, dislike, the next, I I dislike her more than I dislike person. Cora. But I just but the thing with her too is that I don't know what she's really after. I don't know her angle. We don't yet. know her intentions. And it's like Rumpel. I know what you're. I know what you're really after. I mm. I understand why you are who you are. Regina. I understand why you are who you are. Cora. Now I understand. Dan, uh -huh. who you were, rest in peace. Um, but Tamara, <laughs> I don't know. But and that really bugs me every week. I'm like, oh, what mm -hmm. is... And I want to know so bad. Yeah, and that's yeah. exactly it, because we've seen backstories. We've had time to mm -hmm. attach to these characters who are seemingly evil, but actually do kind of have some good in them. But Tamara, she just started bad from the beginning. Well, yeah, you know, that's not real. Like, if you didn't see... Regina take away my childhood, and I was just here <laughs> trying to k kidnap Hook and take magic. Would you consider me even a sliver of good until you know my backstory? 
Well, I don't have anything Probably against uh, I, Greg. No, that's that's one of the things that I was actually thinking about. If we knew more of Tamara's backstory, yeah. would we think that there is good in her, or was she just an evil kid? Sure. Too? <laughs> I even think that she's kind of playing Greg. Yeah. Yes, I, I yeah, think so, Because, um, you know, she's there, they're, you know, doing their thing or whatever, and I know he wants to find his father, so I understand why he's doing what he's doing. But I still, I can't see how she's related in this world. So yes. I feel like she's even lying and, you know, has an ulterior plan to what he it's thinks, too. It's hard to trust her in any angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so we'll see, cool. I guess. Yeah. So I think that kind of wraps up tonight's episode. We got a good teaser of next week, which just looks crazy. And then As always. we are in the two-part finale, just two weeks mm -hmm. away. It's going to be crazy. We actually have another special guest, which we won't... I don't know if we're going to mention. We'll mention at, at, at the end of the episode yeah. who it is. But now we want to get into our special segment okay. with our All very special guest, Benjamin Stockham. Yay! Benjamin Stockham. <laughs> Applause! Yay! <laughs> um, so... You played Owen on Once Upon a Time. You've also had a ton of other guest roles from, I think, CSI. Rizzoli and Isles. Rizzoli and Isles. Yep. Tons of stuff. So what was it like um, doing Once Upon a Time? It was cold and rainy. Because <laughs> they film in Canada. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was fun, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last scene, uh, it was night and it was raining. Yeah. And the heater was, like, way over there. <laughs> <laughs> and while I'm shooting the scene, I'm just <clears throat> looking back and I'm like, come to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, and it didn't. <laughs> how many days were you on set? Ten. Ten. Mm -hmm. And is that, like, typical for how long people are there to film episodes? I don't know. You maybe. don't know? <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I'm not sure, though. Yeah. How long ago did you film that episode? Uh, like a month or two. I'm not good mm. with time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What, what was the um, audition process like for you? Okay. So I auditioned. I got a call back. I went to producers. And then I did it. Did you know um, what your character who you were auditioning for at the time? Because oh. I know sometimes they don't tell people. No, I, I didn't. I knew my f mother died and stuff, mm -hmm. but I didn't know. You see, when they first did it, and I, I was, like, making cookies with my teacher instead of Regina, like oh. some sort of teacher. Oh. So they kind of keep a secret that it's Regina, and I'm like, yeah. what the heck does this have to do with Once Upon a Time? It's a freaking teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that they were secretly hiding it. Yeah. So um, I was talking to your mom before we started watching, and she said that you guys didn't watch Once Upon a Time before filming, but that you guys have gotten really into it after yeah. you filmed. So how much of Once Upon a Time have you seen? Four or five episodes. Yeah. About. yeah. And you're really into sci fi, right? Like, you like Grimm. I like Grimm. Yes, I like Grimm. Yeah. What are some, some of your other favorite other. shows? I like Falling Skies. I like Teen Wolf. Uh, I like Adventure Time. Yeah. Okay. That's oh, like wow. totally like an outsider compared to all the other stuff. Um, a lot of TV shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and a lot of sci fi. What made you get into acting? I know you started off in print. Mm, I did. I started off in print. and When you were little. Yes, when I was like two. We heard oh, you were a very cute baby. Adorable. And we actually have some pictures Are you Are you of ready? you yes. as a baby. <laughs> oh, so. my God, it's right there. Oh, yeah. ah, she opened my eyes. If you're listening, you definitely want to go over to AfterBuzzTV.com, and we will have these pictures online so you can see them. But this is little Benjamin. Benji is Benji. your nickname. I have a light emitting from my head. Yes, I think we, it's a snowflake. We have one more. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. Look at those, those, those big cheeks. Look, look you should have seen my fat head. <laughs> it was huge. You Those were a eyelashes. very cute oh my baby. Gosh. Very, very cute. No wonder you got into print at such a young age. <laughs> so, yeah. Very photogenic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just all like, oh, no, she's taking a picture. I can't turn fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I kind of look all troubled. Like, you better not. <laughs> yeah, so print, and then I'm like, 
You know what, dude? I want lines. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I, uh, my first really big thing was when I got this TV show called Sons of Tucson. Mm -hmm. Then I waited for like two years after it got canceled. Then I, uh, doing what I currently did. It's 16 hour pen. I don't know what's happened with that yet, but, uh, cross your fingers. Yeah. And, um, I just did a pilot for, uh, this thing called About a Boy. Yeah. yeah. So I want to talk about 1600 Pen for a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's a comedy, a 30 minute comedy about the first family. Mm -hmm. And they kind of have a modern day family as well, where there's the president and then the first lady, who is actually the stepmother to his children. It's his second wife. Mm -hmm. And you play Xander, yes, who I is do. the youngest of the kids in the brood. And you are just the cutest kid in the world. You're like so smart and I love the glasses. Above your <laughs> age like I love it. Thanks. <laughs> so, do you think that that represents you in any way or you're completely different from Xander? Nope. I am completely different from Xander. I'm not that smart and uh, <laughs> that's it. I'm I, 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 I don't wear glasses. <laughs> yes. Yes. Nothing so, wrong with glasses. But I feel no, like you no, are. true. Nothing wrong with glasses. You're older than your years. Mm-hmm. Very precocious. You're wise beyond your years. Very precocious. Yes. yes. I, I'm probably the most intellectually old of all of them. Probably. Yeah. I, I don't know. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're definitely more mature than Skip. On Most the show, definitely. Yes. who plays the oldest brother and the least mature person I think I've ever seen on TV. <laughs> no <laughs> he's, way. He's got a heart of gold. The most, the least mature person I have ever seen on TV is Regina. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Henry seems pretty immature. <laughs> you think so? A little bit. I feel like he's really mature for his age. He's kind of schooling Emma and his dad a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Wooden swords. Oh, yeah. So mature. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about Once Upon a Time, who are some of the actors that you interacted with on set? Other than Regina and... <laughs> I was just like, all right. It's like, Lana Perilla. Lana Perilla, yeah. She was like the one I talked to the most. Yeah. Because you had a lot of scenes with her. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I guess. Um, John. Yes, that's his name. The guy who plays I'm your bad dad. With names. John bad with name. Piper. Well, yes, John Piper. What was Regina like? She was one of the most nicest evil queens I've ever heard. Aww. <laughs> she was so just genuinely nice. It was crazy. Yeah. She seems like a nice person. She yeah. does, and she's beautiful. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Yeah. So anyone else you interacted with on set? I interacted with, uh, not on set, but I did interact with uh, Jared. Oh, Jared Gilmore, yeah. 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 Yes. Who we, plays Henry? We, we, we played Uno. You cool. played Uno? Uno, yeah. So Great what is thing. the school like on set? Is it just one teacher who tutors yeah, it, all of the kids? It's like in a trailer. It's just like a regular school, except not. Yeah, and in Canada, very cold. Yeah. Yes. No playground. <laughs> No playground. No playtime either. Yeah. No recess? Oh. No recess. So are you in school now or are you tutored by someone? I'm uh, in school now. Okay. Not like a public school, homeschool. Okay. Okay. I tutor myself. You tutor <laughs> yourself? Yes, because I'm just so flippin' genius. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you do have a little yeah, Xander in you. Yeah, there. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just uh, bluffing. <laughs> so I also hear that you like to draw. Yes. Yeah, that's like Don't a passion. tell me you have pictures of that, too. We actually yes, do yes, have we do. one of your pictures. I Look at and that. I am so impressed mm -hmm. by this. I mean, if if you're not watching us, you have to go see this, this illustration that you amazing. did. It's beyond your years. Like, yes. I don't think that there are people who are 30 who can do this. You are very talented. Yeah, you yes. put all four of us Great. to draw this yeah. one happen. And I your know. mom was showing me <laughs> some of the illustrations that you did. Like, there was one just for a friend that you had done for Christmas. And, I mean, this is one of many. So yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Uh, she, she gave you the unfinished product. It oh. wasn't even finished. How dare she? It still How looks amazing. <laughs> so, you do, did no. you do this on an iPad? Yeah, the iPad. 
Just how do you do okay. it? Is there like an app? Do you have or? like a pencil? It's, it's called brushes, and I just I just use my finger. Wow. You use your okay. finger? Yeah, my finger. I can barely use my finger to type a text message. On my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, my fat thumbs just hit the wrong keys. Yeah. That's amazing. That how long did it take okay. you to do? Uh, about. Two days. Two days? Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. I went to an art school and some people can't even draw that well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So your creativity is not just in your acting, it's also on your um, iPad. Thank you. Yeah, and <laughs> I was good. reading on um, NBC's website on 1600 Pin that, do you have an um, illustrate? are you illustrating a children's book? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Or are you not allowed to talk about it? Uh, okay. Uh, there's like this land of, uh, it's called the land of colors. And it's got like candy. And and then there are these like evil things called truly trolls. And and uh, then there's like Princess Poopernickel. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Poopernickel? Poopernickel. Yes. Poopernickel. It's like Puppernickel, but with. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Wait, so who who created this concept? Was it you who also? I did not write it. Okay. No, I could not come up with such genius. <laughs> uh, it's uh, a woman called Robin, Robin Dean. Okay. I, I think that's her last name. So bad with names. I'm sorry if that's not your last name. But she came, came up with Poopernickel, so. Poopernickel, yes. We'll just call her Poopernickel. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so when do you know when we can maybe... Buy this, this, expect it, or <laughs> I am slacking beyond my, my my I was like supposed to get this done like a year ago. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just I, I slacked. So I, I haven't even started yet. Yeah. How many drawings do you have to do for this? Uh page wise? I don't even know how many pages there are, but okay. I I think like at least 20? like twenty. Yeah. Yes. Wow, at intense. 12 years old, already going to be, like, publish his art. I know. Be published. When is that plan? Makes me when question are you what I'm doing with my life. Coming out. <laughs> just can read um, wait, what would she say? Sorry. Oh, when do you plan on that uh, oh, being released? he said that so. he doesn't know. I don't know. still don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, I, I got to ask, what, what, how is the food on set? <laughs> Which foodie. one? Craft service. <laughs> on, uh, on Once Upon a Time. Yeah, Once Upon, Once a, upon a, time. a Time. That was some delicious food. Oh, Whose nice. crafty table is better? Is it Once Upon a Time or 1600 Pen? Oh, Once Upon a Time by a walk. No! Oh. I'm sorry, 1600 Pen, but they had, like, turkey and, and like, these, I don't know what these <laughs> <laughs> they were like crackers with cream in them. Not like no, uh, uh wafers or is that what? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, wafers. Sounds delicious. And yeah, must be Canadian. And <laughs> there and there were like zingers and then there was like sandwiches. Go once upon a time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, 1600. Maybe <laughs> had all the healthy stuff. <laughs> Go for it, Stephen. I think Stephen has a question for you too. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the voice of person in the booth. Um. So. As a young actor and acting with so many talented people on set and being talented yourself, like, is there any kind of, is it ever awkward when you're working with so many people who are older than you when you're not on a show that has very many people closer to your age? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> it, it's, like, weird. Like, I'm just this little kid here, and you always feel weird to say something because they're like, he's a kid, don't take it seriously. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I was, like, really... The first day is always the worst day because mm -hmm. you don't know anybody. It's just really awkward, and everybody's, like, so much older than you, especially when you're a kid. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's awkward. Um, but as you progress in the show and stuff, they, like, when you say something that's, like, really clever, they just, like, let you in. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh You it's are very awkward. clever. Yeah. You're yeah. a funny kid. You are. Thank very you. <laughs> so that I'm definitely nice. struck a chord with yeah. us. <laughs> so does your mom go with you to set usually? Mm -hmm. Or do you have someone else? Yeah. Uh, mom. Okay. My mom. And then you also have a puppy named Pilot. Is does he the special guest? Does he? Get, <laughs> no. We, unfortunately, no. we that's the only thing we don't have pictures of. But... <laughs> Did he, uh, does he ever go to set with you, or he has to stay at home? He went once, and he peed on the floor <laughs> in the makeup room. In the makeup room. There, so, uh, Martha, he, she plays Becca. She, uh, she on hurt her dog when Pilot saw him, her. 
he was so excited in the makeup room. He just like, don't go to church. He just like, when he's excited sometimes, he just like pees randomly and then he just darts. Oh my gosh. Wow. He is very cute though. I saw yeah. pictures before he watched. He adorable. It's a little Yorkie, right? Yeah, a Yorkie. Yeah. Um, so cute. So you showed me a picture on your phone and it is just a blurred out screen because Pilot is just running around and you can yeah. even take a still picture yeah, of him. Yeah, uh, it was in a video and he was just like, he had his ball. Sometimes he wants to get on the couch, but he fails. So he's like running and he's running and, and he's like jumping at them. He Aww. just hits the side of the couch. <laughs> and then he just walks away like nothing happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is like America's Funniest Home Videos kind of <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it is. Yep. Need to record that. Put uh, it online. I, I tried that one time, but... He he just sat there. Oh, <laughs> it's so. Sad. It's always when you least expect it. Yeah, just that's why I'm just gonna like running. make this thing to like just record all of my life. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I have another real quick idea. question. Uh huh. So you're surrounded by all these really cool technology because they're filming on like the like state of the art equipment and everything. Do you ever like kind of get behind the camera and learn a little bit about it? And yeah, sometimes, <clears throat> like uh, while I'm waiting for a scene to start or something, I like ask him how the camera works, and it's just, uh, it's Greek to me. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you gotta turn this thing to do that thing, and I'm like, what is that called again? Sorry, I don't know what that does. Calling <sighs> focus? Yeah. yeah, that's that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's slow one. So, I know what Benjamin, like. <laughs> last question. Do you know if they're gonna have you back at all? <sighs> Oh, no, I don't. You don't It'd know. be cool, though. I'd love it to go back cool. yeah. to Canada and just, like, see, like, Lana and Jared, everybody else. That'd be awesome to just, like, go back and see everybody again. Mm -hmm. yeah. After it's been, like, two months, man. Well, That'd I know awesome. yeah. the one person that you didn't meet on set who is someone that you should is Ethan Embry. Yes. And he is actually our special guest in two I weeks. Know. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't know it was him. Yeah, yeah, he's our special guest, and he plays the old version of you. And so we want to get you back so that you guys can be in the same room together. I would love to. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. awesome. I think that would be so cool. <laughs> it would be cool. <laughs> It'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that's all our questions that we have for you, but let's get into news and gossip. After Buzz. TV news. Okay, Benji, I need you to cover your ears real quick because this news, um, I'll say it quick because there's children in the room. <laughs> um, I know. I know. It's, really it's very awkward. It's like earmuffs. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. Okay. Speak in pig Latin. Latin. Yes. So, nay. A, a lure magazine's look better naked issue is on uh, stands now, and yeah. Jennifer Morrison is in it. She looks great. Like, girl's got it going on. <laughs> Good job. Um, she was quoted saying that, you know, she doesn't ever really get the chance. Call of, those papers, yeah. Oh, she doesn't really ever get the chance to, you know, show her body off. She never gets asked to pose naked. So she's hoping that maybe she gets to do it again sometime. Um, she was on Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> sure where um, Jimmy Kimmel brought it up and was looking at the magazine. Watch um, the interview that online. Was a great interview. It was a great interview. Hilarious. Um, she was talking about, you know, how her mom didn't even know that she did this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, her mom's going to find out when it's on newsstands which it is now so check that out guys it's, that's all i'm gonna say because there's children here yeah. um, and uh, as always tv guy did another lightning round with um adam horowitz and edward kitsis um the question came up of will we see kurt flynn aka greg's father again the answer was yup Wow, That's all they good. said. Nice. Wait, what? What? I did. Wait. wait <laughs> one, right? Oh, sorry. You can start listening again oh, now. Yeah, you can start you can listening, listening again. again. Yeah, okay. That's my bad. Put your Put headphones head. back on. Yeah. yeah. There we go. There you go. <laughs> so basically, they asked if Kurt Flynn would be back. <gasps> your actor said, dad's going to be back. Your actor dad's going to be back. <laughs> which means that I guess maybe, I don't know, maybe he Owen is still on Storybook Kurt. Maybe Owen finds his father. Um... Or we see some more flashbacks. Yeah, yeah. flashbacks, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, everyone's been concerned because Megan Ori got that CBS pilot. Good news is that the pilot's shooting in Canada, so if it gets picked up, the show would shoot in Vancouver as well. Mm. So it would be a lot easier for them to get her back to Once Upon a Time since it's the same city. So she won't be missing out on anything. Basically, they're saying we're not looking to replace her at all. Ruby is Ruby, and we're not planning to write her off at any yeah. point That's in good. the series. Cool. 
Um, another question that came up was about Rufio because we know that we're Rufio. going to Neverland and everyone wants to know Rufio. if Rufio is going to be in their interpretation. Rufio. Sadly, the rights to Rufio belongs to Sony. Duh. So, of course it is. <laughs> so whereas um, Kitsa says that, you know, Rufio will always live in their hearts. Um, they wish that they could have him on the show, but in their minds, he exists there. We just probably won't see him. Yeah. We'll probably Darn. see a lot of mermaids and, yeah, mermaids and maybe. that kind of stuff. Lost Boys. Um, they would not say if we'll get to see any more of Robin Hood, maybe playing a bigger role in season three. Um, and the last question is, will there be more death this season? And the answer was, can't say. Um, um, fuck you! <laughs> so I think we'll we'll move on to predictions. Yeah, for I them. think. Yeah, on that note, we can go into some predictions. Very quickly, do our predictions. And now you're after Buzz TV predictions. Okay. So biggest question: Will there be more deaths this season? Well, when you say I can't say or maybe, it's always yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll see at least one more death. And um, I think this young boy who could be the undoing of Rumpel, we might find him in Neverland. Mm. Young boy. Mm. Whether it be Henry or another young boy that we haven't met yet. But maybe I think it was, <laughs> I actually think the young boy might have been Owen. What? Yeah. What? Hmm. What? That was the undoing. Like there could be a possibility because they never said when it was, but right? But Owen's yeah. all grown up now. He I wouldn't, know. Wouldn't he have already had his undoing by now? I don't know. I think that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Uh, <laughs> I think. Sorry. I think that Gre Greg Mendel is going to be the downfall of Regina. Mm -hmm. Somehow. Yeah. Ooh. And also, mm -hmm. I mean, August is a young boy again, so that's another young mm -hmm. boy thrown into the mix. Yeah. yeah. A lot of young boys. <laughs> yeah, they so. used to just have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds bad when you say it like that. <laughs> oh You're mine, man. Okay. Um, Kiana. My prediction is that um, Emma is going to put together who August was trying to warn her about, and that it's yes. going to create a feud between her and Neil because she's going to have to kind of. Neil's gonna think, no, you're just sabotaging my relationship because you still want me, and she's gonna have to come to terms with the fact that she does still want him, mm -hmm. and he's gonna have to come to the terms that like he still wants her, but he thinks that she's just being a jealous, I crazy person because... Mm -hmm. I feel like she's already come to terms that she wants him, but then she realizes I can't do that because he has a fiance, yeah. so yeah. I'm gonna move But on. once she figures out who his fiance, what his fiance is really right. up to, then it's gonna be that fine line of that crazy, crazy baby mama versus new fiance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plus worse. <laughs> so Benjamin, Benji, what are your predictions? Do you have any? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, what about your predictions for Regina? Do you mm -hmm. think she's going to end the she'll... season evil or good? Do you think she'll get Henry back? I think that Maybe hmm. that she's gonna have to come to the choice of how she's gonna get Henry back. Like, in order to get to Neverland, she. I'm not good with predictions. Give me a second. <laughs> Just give me a sec. I can do this. <laughs> Maybe she like goes back on the fact that she took her child, took a childhood away from a boy, and she thinks. Wow, am I really just doing this to be selfish again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think she's going to be remorseful when she kind of figures out that Gregory, you know, came back to find his father and all of that? That he's yeah, Owen? Yeah, she's like, no, he's not here. He, she's probably not going to be remorseful because she sort of already said that he's not here, so she, she's definitely trying to hide something. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I wonder what happened okay. to him. Well, she said that, he left shortly after you did, and yeah. I never saw him again. But we don't yeah. know if that's true or not. She could have just sent him off to a different place. Yeah, land. and she's yeah. hinted yeah. that that is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But with, okay, another prediction I have with her finding the beans, mm -hmm. I predict that she's going to take the beans and try to, like, kidnap Henry and, like, portal jump with him uh, to get him away I from everyone. I definitely think the beans are going to do something with yeah. Marina. She definitely, definitely has a personal agenda with those beans. Yes. Mm hmm well, that sound means it's time to wrap up. So, Benjamin, where can they find you on Twitter and let us know about your other projects? 
Oh no, my Twitter name. Ah. It's Benj Stockham. Benj Stockham, that's right. <laughs> you can find me at Benj Stockham. I'm sorry, I'm bad with Twitter. I've been tweeting you a lot tonight. <laughs> sorry, no, <laughs> by heart. Um, and then they can also catch you on 1600 Pen and in your upcoming role in About a Boy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Tiana, Watch where can out. they find you? Hey everyone, I'm Tiana. <laughs> <laughs> Zoned out. Um, I, you can reach me at Twitter and Instagram at TweetT22. Uh, you can find me at K-A-O-R-I-O-U-S, Corius on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all that jazz. And you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. You can find me on Twitter at Katherine Kelly. You can find all of us here on Twitter at AfterBuzz TV. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to talk thank about you, next week's episode. Yes, thank and you, Benjamin. thank you so much to thank our you. guest, Benjamin Stockham. Thank you were amazing. You. The best. Thank you. you were too. <laughs> <laughs> you all were too. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.